Wipe out terrorism and insurgency, President Muhammad Buhari orders armed forces. And counting down to Oshun governorship election, our correspondent gives us an update of preparations. Details on Panorama with me, Naja Atutijani. We'll also be joining Joss in the course of the bulletin. The armed forces of Nigeria to collaborate more effectively with those of the neighboring countries towards ensuring terrorists and insurgents undermining security and stability are wiped out from the face of the earth. The president gave the directive at the graduation ceremony of the senior executive course 44 of the armed forces command and staff college Jaji Kaduna saying it is necessary so that Nigeria and affected countries Countries can be taken to their rightful destination of peace and stability. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. 247 participants found worthy in both character and learning graduated at the event after 48 weeks of rigorous training exercise from the Joint Services Institution established in 1976. Among them, 15 international military students and 11 from the nation's paramilitary organizations. The special guest of honor, President Muhammad Buhari, presented Order of Merit Awards to those who distinguished themselves from the land, maritime, and air warfare departments with Major Sunday Olayinka Atomode, imagine the overall best participant. President Buhari, who congratulated the graduating students, expressed the conviction that with a huge investment in their training, they have been sufficiently groomed to take up the challenges ahead as the nation continues to battle insecurity. Nigeria expects the very best from you in terms of loyalty, commitment to duty, and service to our fatherland. Therefore, we must endeavor to make honest and positive contributions in the discharge of the constitutional responsibilities of the armed forces of Nigeria. Most of the security challenges facing the world today, the president said, are both asymmetric and transborder in nature, involving mainly non-state actors. The West African sub-region and indeed the continent of Africa, he noted, are not immune to these threats. We have witnessed recent terrorist attacks in Nigeria bearing the hallmark of national and transborder insurgents trying to cause havoc, combating these prevalent security threats effectively demands that African countries continue to work together at all levels. It will be part of our duty to confront these terrorists and insurgents and wipe them off the face of the earth and bring peace to our countries. The college has laid a solid professional foundation for you to make timely and informed decisions in addressing the numerous challenges that you are bound to meet as you make progress in your respective careers. 16,202 officers of the armed forces of Nigeria 242 paramilitary and civilian staff as well as 1,010 non-Nigerian officers from more than 30 countries have been trained by the college since inception in 1976. From Jaji Kaduna State, Adamusambu, NTA News.
Away from security, a pan-African position articulated and promoted by leaders of the continent on the global net zero emissions target by 2050 to 2060 will further advance the quest for a just energy transition. Vice President Yemi Oshimbatio stated this at a meeting with diplomats from the G7 countries comprising the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, France, Japan and the Republic of Egypt. Other global agencies including the United Nations, World Bank and the International Monetary Fund were also in attendance at the meeting held at the presidential villa. State House correspondent Chide Onifadi reports. Vice President Yemi Oshimbago spoke after a presentation of Nigeria's energy transition plan and brief comments by the diplomats and country representatives says the plan is geared towards the actualization of a Pan-African initiative. The very idea of a broad-based coalition that involves uh, partners, uh, countries, uh, uh, C4L, the United Nations, uh, and of course, um, the development partners as well. I think that that way we are holding ourselves accountable because the whole point of a broad-based coalition is to ensure that um, it's not just given by government or government agencies, but everyone's involved. And even in the drawing up of our plan, we were uh, very uh, deliberate about ensuring that this came from a consultation from the drug business. As he says, developing a common African narrative is absolutely important because it sets the stage in providing a clear vision and a clear objective to have a pan-African initiative. I think that those nuances just have been taken into account so that um, we are not, uh, not ignoring uh, the, the important issues that are spinning up in the country. So that countries do not feel the need to chart a part of their own in a way that jeopardizes the African narrative. I think it's important, the African plan. I think it's important that we factor all those nuances in and um, make sure that we are sort of working uh, in tandem uh, with each other. But he said the federal government has adopted international approaches, including the setting up of an energy transition office, among others, to coordinate the processes. In a separate remarks, the representatives all commended Nigerians' leadership towards the actualization of an African initiative for energy transition. In the State House, Jude Unifadi, NT News. The presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Senator Raibu Musa Kwankosu, has announced Bishop Isaac Idahosa as his running mate. A statement tweeted via the official Twitter handle of the party on Wednesday indicates the Lagos-based vice presidential candidate will be formally endorsed on Monday, 18th July at the International Conference Centre in Abuja. Bishop Idahosa, the presiding bishop and senior pastor of the God First Ministry, Lekki Light Center Aja, hails from Edo State. The 57-year-old trained automobile engineer from the Kaduna Polytechnic also has a master's and doctor also has master's and doctorate degrees in theology. He's happily married to Christiana Idahosa and is blessed with two children. We'll now join our correspondent Lanri. Billy are live in Oshobo for an update on preparations on the ground for the July 16 Oshun governorship election. Hello, Lan Na Lanry. Can you hear me rather? Yes, I can hear you. Now, we hear that the Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced distribution of sensitive and non-sensitive materials for the election to 30 local government areas in the state. So, what's the latest following this? You know, I was there very early this morning when they started distribution. And uh, I discovered that they started distribution of sensitive materials from the places 
farthest to the state capital here in Oshugo, to places that are nearer to the state capital. And um, I was with uh, the PRO when somebody was saying that um, uh, should we commence, and the PRO was a little bit uh, miffed about the about the question, saying yes, you ought to have started um, taking materials down to the centres immediately. And uh, immediately, the cars that are parked, the I mean, the rented cars that are parked with security agents uh, started moving the uh, sensitive materials down to the places. Um, like I said earlier, they are starting with the farthest areas, the areas, the coalition centers. We have about 30 coalition centers and 30 local governments in our Shu state. And they started from the farthest area down to the places that are nearer to the state capital. And what's the mood of this of the people in the city like Lanry considering this has happened? Are they prepared to cast their ballots? What are they saying? What are the people saying? Well, well the last election, uh, it was more like a two-horse race, but this time around, we have four political parties jostling uh, to to have a seat in the uh, uh, state uh, government. And um, what has changed since then? So in 2018, it's more like a two-horse race between the PDP and the APC. And they are, they are saying, we've been down that road before. And what is going on now? Uh, what has changed? Do they want the government to continue? Do they want a new dispute? Dispensation, and that will set the tone for tomorrow when election commences. My people, I spoke with an hotel earlier this morning, said hotels are booked, fully booked and full. And uh, due to the uh, the election, people came in and to, to vote for the candidate of your choice. And uh, community leaders are saying old faces and new faces are now around them to participate in the election. And finally, what about security personnel? What's the update on their presence? Oh, it's a heavy presence here in Oshu State. Um, everywhere you go, you see security uh, standing by, checking cars. Even during the the election, the campaigns, the security are uh, there. We, we, uh, while I was uh, walking around Oshu, uh, Oshubu, I beg your pardon, I saw security presence every area in every bus stop in every nook and cranny i must say uh, they are there checking on people cordial uh, with mutual respect i must say and they are passing cars the job is not left to for, for one security agencies from the road safety to uh, policemen even the army uh, at the fringes of uh, uh, very sensitive areas in the in the town so the security presence here is massive and encouraging all right, Larry, thank you. Not to preempt anything, as I hear there will be a celebrity. People are expecting a celebrity to cast his vote. But I'll stop here for now, and then we'll get more updates from you later. Thank you for joining us and giving us updates. We'll try to do that. Now, I've been talking to our correspondent, Larry Belay in Oshobo, for updates considering and preparations considering the forthcoming elections. The 2022 National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST, is to be hosted by the Lagos State Government. And Governor Babajide Songwulu has given assurance after receiving a delegation from the National Council for Arts and Culture, led by the Director General Shegun Shewe, on the level of preparedness of the state in hosting the festival. Governor Songwulu said the state government had to improve their facilities to meet all criteria set by the NCAC, which will enable the state not only host the biggest and most colorful festival, but also emerge the overall winner of the fiesta, as Lagos State will hold a pre nafest event for seven days aimed at showcasing the rich cultural heritage of the local government areas in the state and will also herald the Echo Nafest 2022. The Director General of the NCAA, Shegun Rushoe, reiterated that the festival, which grows richer, bigger, and better with every edition, will provide a strong platform for Lagos State, which is the center of excellence, to bring its well-known finesse to bear in making the Echo Nafest 2022 the best of its kind in the history of the festival, given the track record of the state. It's time for a break, after which we'll join Zenret and Joss for more on Panorama. Stay tuned.
the vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers early. Thanks for staying with us on Panorama. Welcome to JOSS. The ongoing trial census by the National Population Commission in Plata State is receiving a positive response by target communities. Caleb Kuchin has the report. The benefits of census to a nation like Nigeria have been underscored severally. The commitment of federal government towards our holistic census come 2023 can therefore be described as a welcome development. The trial census is a very crucial component of the main census, which the commission says is being given every attention. Leaders of Gindin Akwati community, an old mining settlement, say they are ever ready. Any uh, language in, Pla in Nigeria is here. We have Hausa, Fula, Ni, Yarbawa, eh, Ibu, Tarok, ever, any community that's here that will try but all we are going to cooperate and work together to successfully of this exercise. We are going willing to work together with you people. The Commissioner, National Population Commission, Plata State, commended the people for their positive response and urged them not to relent in giving all the necessary cooperation for the success of the exercise. The, the, the effort we put in to succeed, we are seeing that yes, that is dividend that is results so we may replicate such during the census or even improve the national population commission team had a brief parley with the community leaders where they pledged to play their role accordingly to ensure a hit free census come 2023 in jones caleb gochin and tenny and we have in the studio the Federal Commissioner, National Population Commission, Plata State, Cecilia Daport, to talk more on the exercise. Welcome to Panorama. Thank you. Okay, so the trial census for the 2023 population and housing census has commenced in Plata State. What are your observations so far on the exercise? Thank you. Um, so far, we have noticed that all the staff that are posted to the nine local governments concerned are actively doing what they are supposed to do. And we are very uh, glad with what they are what they are doing. For those who've been able to to visit, we are very, very impressed. We hope that you know they'll continue the hard work because we have no room for failure. Of the of the real census coming up in 2023. Okay, ma'am. So how significant is the trial census to the main headcount? Yeah, you know, for 16 years now we've not had a uh, census, okay. and we are going to use a new system now. We are going to do digital um, census. Therefore. The trial census is just a preparation to ensure that, you know, the, 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 the coming census is going to be successful. Mm. We are blocking any loophole that we discover during trial census to ensure that we are on the right track and that we are going to have a very, very huge flip um, census. Okay, so um, do you envisage any challenge, particularly in rural communities? Well, um, that's the essence of the trial census, mm. to know if, if there's any challenge. Mm. For now, so far, 
we've not had any challenge. We had a, we've been working with the rural people for quite some time in preparation for that, uh, for this uh, election, I mean, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, uh, Headcount. Uh, head count. Head count, yeah. And we've not had any serious challenge so far. So we have every confidence that it's going to work out. Okay. So um, what is your message of the Federal Commission on NPC in Plakasi? What's your message to stakeholders? Yeah. My message to stakeholders is that this activity is for the benefit of Plateau State and Nigeria as a whole. And, you know, in our meetings with the stakeholders we encourage them because they know better to talk to the rural people to know that this exercise is for their own benefit if government doesn't know their problems she will not be able to solve it okay so we need support and support and support okay and lastly what's your message to the public that in the same manner the public is the target of the, mm. the exercise. Therefore, they should own it. Mm. They should understand it and own it and realize that it is for their own benefit. Okay. So everybody should, all hands should be on deck to ensure that this uh, exercise is a success. Okay, thank you so much, Ma, for coming to the studio to enlighten us on the exercise. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on. President Mohamed Buhari congratulates Nigeria's senior football team, the Super Falcons, for qualifying for the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand in 2023 after their emphatic quarterfinal victory at the ongoing Women's Cup of Nations, Wafkan, in Morocco. Super Falcons, the record nine-time title holder and defending champions of Wafcon, triumphed once to nil over Cameroon on Thursday night. In a statement signed by the special advisor to the president, media and publicity Femi Adishina, the president lauds the spirited performance of the team in the tournament and for maintaining its dominant posture as in undisturbed undisputed champions of the round leather game and most successful international women's football team in the continent. The statement adds that, having won the tournament twice in 2016 and 2018 under this administration, the president assures the girls and their handlers that the whole nation is strongly standing with them and will continue to cheer them on until the final whistle in Morocco. It prays that the Super Falcons, who have produced some of the greatest African players in the history of the women's game, will surpass their achievements in the last Women's World Cup in 2019, where they advanced to the round of 16 for the first time in 15 years. President Buhari also looks forward to the next generation of upcoming stars, who through hard work, Discipline, resilience, and determination will one day win the World Cup for Nigeria. That's it on Panorama today. Remember to be a star and join NTA in the campaign against rape and rapists. Thanks for your time.